show starts in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to episode four of Bubbles and Flames podcast. And tonight, what we're going to talk about are uh, uh, tonight, what we're going to talk about is picking the perfect wax and the perfect soap base for your business. However, I wanted to recap because we had a couple technical issues last week. So I wanted to recap what the discussion was about last week. Does anybody in the comments remember what we talked about? It seemed like it was so long ago. And it's one of our favorite subjects out there in Candleland anyway. And while you all are putting in the comments um, what that episode was about, uh, I am Tina. I am the host of the Bubbles and Flames podcast, and I am also the creator and owner of uh, Nuts About Candles, and I specialize in non-traditional uh, candles. But uh, we are pleased that you are joining us tonight. And yes, from Wicked Sense, he said testing. So he is absolutely correct. We were talking about testing, and there it is. Um, and uh, also Jayla checked in and said testing. So testing and research are some of the biggest things that can make or break your company. So you want to make sure that you take your time, you research your products, and also that you test your products and test them in different environments and different situations. And also, if you are a candle maker, make sure that you power burn your candle, meaning leaving it burning all night, of course, keeping an eye on it, because most of our customers don't follow what we tell them in our candle tips and tricks. Not that they don't read them, they just don't follow them. So keep that in mind. Also, if you're a soap maker, you also want to, uh, test your soap uh, and make sure that everything is where it is supposed to be in terms of your soap. Um, I personally don't do uh, soap and skincare, but I have several people in the house that will always jump in um, when we start talking about soap. Uh, one thing I wanted to do, I wanted to do a quick poll uh, from from everyone who is here and everyone who is watching. Um, also, I'll put this out on the YouTube channel, but for everybody that is here, are you all interested in doing a second, uh, excuse me, a separate episode of just skincare alone? I put this on my TikTok and I got um, pretty good response um, about doing a separate issue. Uh, I keep saying issue, so uh, don't laugh, but you know how it is on YouTube. Uh, we still, we're Still humans, we make mistakes, but doing a separate episode on just skincare. Uh, and what I mean by that is skincare is, is a whole separate thing in itself. It could be, do you do body butters? Uh, do you do facials? You know, those type of things. Are you an esthetician? Um, there's been some interest there for that. So I wanted to put that out there and see for those that are in the comments and also those that are going to watch the replay. If you could go and participate uh, for those of you watching the replay uh, in the poll that I'm going to put out there about skincare. And so uh, I'm asking because I want to get that set up for you all for those that have responded. All right. Next thing. What about product research? Why is that important? Why would I even care what wax I pick or what soap base that I use? Why would I even care about that? Why is it important? And that's what we're going to pick up with and what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, I, I see I've got some of my favorites back here. Um, joining us tonight, we have some newcomers and we also have um, people who couldn't make it last week. They're joining us live this week. So Abba, of course, you know, you are welcome anytime. All right. You know, we love to talk from our comments. And uh, Jayla, for those of you who don't know who she is and for those of you watching the replay, Jayla is actually... Um, 
she's what's considered to be a master candle maker. She's been in business for several years, well over 20 years. And she owns a uh, light the mood candle company, excuse me, candle company. So definitely check her out. Um, and I'll give uh, each one of the people in the comments time to shout themselves out. But she says each wax is different and reacts different. So it is super important. And I second that whether you're doing any type of product testing, you want to know how the product is going to react when you use it. All right. What about um, for those that are in the chat? Uh, what about my soap makers? Why is it important if you are a soap maker that you choose the right base for you? And we're going to get a little bit deeper into the different bases and the different options that you have and why. But I just wanted to see uh, where everybody is at in the comments. And if you're watching the replay, feel free to comment and follow along. Even though you're not on the live stream, I do go back and read all the comments uh, as well as this group that is in the comments. Or you can keep the conversation going over on Facebook. We actually have our own group over there called the Bubbles and Flames podcast community group. So I'm always interested to see how everybody feels. And definitely if you want to make a comment or questions, please do so below on YouTube or follow us over on the Facebook group. All right. So I'm going to switch it up tonight. Let's talk about, let's talk about the soap first, because I, I want to make sure that my soap makers feel welcomed out there. And um, let's talk about soap first. Uh, if you could put in the comments for me, what are the different types of uh, soap bases that are out there? We're, I'm going to uh, mention them from my research anyway, but what are the different types of uh, soap bases that are out there, the, the big ones? I'm not going to get into the specialty ones. I'm keeping everything basic for those that um, watch the replay that are new makers. I want to make sure that we don't get too deep into this and we will talk about specialty and non-traditional things on another episode. All right. The most famous one is Melt and Pour. Oh, there's Rob checking in. Yes, 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 yes. And he cheated and actually gave you all all three. And welcome, Rob, back to the podcast. All right. Rob is actually a soap maker, and you'll see his products as well as Jayla's products on the channel. Um, they will be coming up in uh, YouTube shorts. And before I uh, address what Rob said, because he cheated and gave you all, all the answers, um, if you are interested in being um, featured on the channel, um, please let me know and reach out to me um, in the DMs or uh, in the messages for YouTube, and I'll reach out to you because that's coming soon. We're going to have a contest going for the actual podcast if you would like your product featured. So look forward to that. All right. So you've had a chance to look at. Um, <laughs> it's no problem, Rob. Uh, you had a chance to look at Rob's comments. He said cold process, hot process and melt and pour. All right. And melt and pour is actually a favorite. It's, it's the big favorite. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop the link in the chat in case anybody wants to come up on this subject. But melt and pour is actually the easiest. Why? Because it's already ready to go. It literally is melted and pour it. So amongst candle makers, we like that one because it's super simple. And we can also add in the pretty things such as botanicals and things like that. Set it, forget it, and it's good to go. Now, hot process and cold process that's a whole different ball game i do not go outside of melt and pour and i'm iffy on the melt and pour um also one thing that we are not talking about necessarily tonight are like your shower bases and things like that i keep it super simple super plain i make stuff for use at home but i'm not ready to venture into those waters yet for uh resale but I dropped the link in the chat. Feel free at any time if you want to come up, if you have a comment. Um, but let's dive into this. So again, melt and pour. Super simple, right? Super easy, super simple. So with melt and pour, there's not really a lot to talk about, right? Because it's kind of cheating. So I'll keep that one simple. But for 
hot process and cold process. And Mr. Robert, since you gave it away, what are some of the reasons that a person might want to look at hot process or cold process? What's what's since you are actually a um, soap maker? What what are some of the differences? Why why would I be interested in hot or cold process soap? Or think you know might want to add it to my lineup? All right. While uh, Rob or anybody who makes soap is um, answering in the comments, what about my candle makers? Let Let's talk about the easiest type of wax. Let's start easy and go up from there. Again, if you're watching the replay, please feel free to put in your comments as well. So let's talk about the easiest one for candle makers. Soy, typically for 44, 464, or for 54. So there's three different types. We're not talking about any blends or anything yet. We're keeping it super simple. Soy. Most candle makers start off with soy. Yes, we're going to talk about paraffin, but I'm keeping it super simple. All right. So what about, okay, so, so Rob put in the chat so you all can see. Cold process is a great way for designs, and it's the most natural way of making soap. It's what people think of when you're talking about making soap. Rob, I appreciate you for that. So uh, can I get a comment about soy on the candle side? What are some of the things that make soy so great? We'll talk about pros and cons. For those of you that are just starting with soap, I love cold process soap. I can't use it because I have uh, sensitivities to it, but it's still the same. It's still the same thing about the lines. That's what draws everybody, um, you know, everybody with all the swirls and everything. All right. And I'm going to bring up our first guest actually on the podcast. So uh, I am going to bring up Loso. Uh, Loso actually is a friend of mine. He comes with me over here to the penthouse from Clubhouse and you will uh, grow to know Loso. And he owns the Wicked Lab Candle Co. Well, Ricket Lab handcrafted, excuse me, and I'll let him tell a little bit more about himself. So I'm going to bring him up now. And Loso, welcome to the podcast. All right. And what what did you want to talk about? Are you doing candles or soap? Because he evening, does both. All right. Can you can you hear me? Um, okay. I can talk from both from from both. Yep, yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. I I, 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 um, can. I can talk from both perspectives um honestly you know so you know dealing with the candle side of things i think when it comes to wax it's, it's a preference honestly you know um because you have some people that start off the gate that go straight with a paraffin based wax um or you have people that go straight with soy um soy is sometimes the cheaper option and that's what comes with most kits um, so I think with the wax, you kind of it's kind of like a toss up there in regards to what's a good wax to start with. Um, but on the soap side of things, you know, you know, my girls, they all started off with cold process. You know, they was playing with the lye and all that stuff. I I had time to deal with the, the chemicals. So I started with melt and pour, which has been working for me. You know, I found the way to actually add designs in my soap. Um, I found ways to layer my soap, do embeds and things of that nature. Um, so melt and pour has been an easy start for me. That's the easy part for anyone who wants to not have to deal with mixing all those things together, melting your butters and stuff like that for your soap. Um, it's easier to do melt and pour, which is where I've been comfortable at. And I've created some wicked things with those uh, melt. All right. So Loso is actually, and Loso, thank you for that feedback. Um, Loso is actually a candle maker who has um, dived into the soap world. And um, he has some lovely ladies that are his partners in crime that uh, will be in the comments making their comments. But they actually started off like me, um, just making candles, and they have graduated to making soap. So Loso, I'm going to hold you hostage up here, but I'm going to bring Rob's comment back up. And he said, traditional soap 
was actually made using the hot process method. And with hot process, you use the heat to cook the soap and it's great to use when you need fragrances that won't work in cold process soaps. So Rob, with that being said, now we've got Loso over here with the melt and pour. Now Rob has just introduced us to the cold soap with all the beautiful soaps, the swirls and everything else. What are some of the cons and why would I be interested in possibly doing hot process soap? Because I'm waiting for somebody to say the L word. So I'll just go ahead and put it out there. What's the cons that could come with cold or hot process soap? And hey, Maury, welcome. <laughs> she uh, she's probably just gonna hang out in the in the comments. <laughs> All right, and I'm gonna bring up another guest. And uh, Robert, are you okay with coming up to the stage about this? Okay, here we go. All right, so I have now my second guest. And see, when we get into this, this whole soap thing, we mentioned the word lie. So I'm going to let um, Rob go ahead and say what he has to say. So Rob, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be here. I'm excited. Um, <laughs> yeah, I agree with Loso. I think milk and pour is a great way to one start out with soap making, and I also think it's a great way to um, really manufacture or make things in a fast way. And also, it's easier to handle because you're not handling lye or a bunch of other oils and stuff like that. It can get very cumbersome, and it can get you know it can it can it can be a lot. And so, I think milk and pour for a lot of people is great. There's a lot of also milk and pour bases out there. There's natural um, milk and pour bases that uses natu more natural ingredients. And then there's also kind of surfactants, which are, you know, it's kind of the basically synthetic detergents and things like that, like that you can get bases of that as well. So I think um, milk and pour is a great way, especially for candle makers, it's a great way to add soap to your business in line without having to learn how to make soap, without having to learn how to deal with lye and chemicals. Cause you know, it, it's a, it's a lot, especially with soap making, when you're talking about hot process and, and especially cold process, there's a lot that goes into it. You have to, you have to think about, especially with cold process, not only is that there is the lye, but you also have to think about the different additives and fragrances. There's a lot, there's, um, there's, there's a lot of fragrances that don't work in cold process because fragrances kind of affect the chemical process of soap. So some some soap, some fragrances accelerate soap, which means that it the soap basically kind of goes through the chemical process in a very accelerated rate, which means that it can harden fast on you. So you don't have time to actually um, put it in the mold or do any designs. You can also, there's also ricine, which basically it what, what happens is that the fragrances kind of bind to the oils in the chemical process and it, and it creates little like pellets or like rice, like, it, like, like rice in the, in the batter and there's separation that can come from it. So sorry about that. There's, there's a separation that can come from that. But, um, I personally, for my business, I have a men's grooming brand and I use all three for different, um, reasons. Um, I don't know if you want me to go into those reasons, but not yet, not yet. Okay, okay um, yeah. Well, sorry. Okay, so, so pause right there. Okay, and I'm gonna come back to you uh, because we're we're working our way up to that. All right, so stay up here and hang tight. All right, so switching back to my candle makers really quick. You all have had time to think about this, so. Um, because I actually use everybody's products who are up here, I'm familiar with what they do and don't use. Um, Loso, I'm going to have you kind of hang out here because you use a different type of wax and I'm still on soy right now. So Miss Jayla, and I know you're going to be in the comments. What is the reason that you primarily stick with soy? Why haven't you ventured out into anything else? And then I will talk about, uh, we'll go on to another type of wax. 
And then I will also loop Loso in as well um, when you talk about blends and other types of wax. And I stop Rob intentionally because I want to loop him back in later in the conversation uh, when we get to the more advanced things. All right, so Jayla, if you could put in the comments for me and anybody else, why do you like soy wax? And can you use soy wax blended with another wax? We all know the answer to that, but for anyone that is new, uh, I wanted you to hear it from experienced makers, why they particularly favor one type of um, wax or soap base over the other, or they use a combination. All right, and Jayla's response is she uses soy for her candles um, or cocoa soy, which is what we're gonna talk about in just a second, depending upon the candles and who they are for. All right, so keep that in mind when you are making decisions for your products. Um, you can also support another candle maker this way, by the way, um, and experience the different types of waxes. All right, and Jayla also made uh, another comment. It works for me, so I'm not interested in switching. And again, once you find something that works for you, you've done all your testing, you're pretty much gonna stick with it, all right? Because every time you change wax for candle makers, you need to do your wick testing again. You need to test it with all your different fragrances that you've picked for your line. So remember, testing is key. Research is important, but testing is key because I would hate for you to have a candle explode we won't talk about the big box company that is becoming known for their candles exploding because they changed their recipe. And with the number of uh, candle explosions that they've had in 2022, I'm starting to wonder if they really tested that, but I didn't say that. But anyway, do what works best for you. For me, I use cocoa soy. So I use a blend. I use coconut soy which is a blend of coconut wax and soy wax. So it's already, it comes already pre-blended, but you also can add, and we're not gonna get into additives yet because that's a later conversation. You, it already comes pre-blended, pre-mixed. So all I have to do literally is melt it and pour it into my um, vessels. All right, so I use cocoa soy. And before I switch over to low, so really quick, Sorry about that. All right, I have a comment um, from Abba. And Abba, actually, this she just um, got past her season. Uh, and the reason that I say that is because she becomes real popular around Valentine's Day because she makes a very lovely massage candle, which I also have as well. All right, so Abba says she hasn't used pure soy wax in candles. She started with the soy blend but later switch to coconut soy wax blends, all right? I love cocoa, I use cocoa 83, and I love it because of the smooth tops that I get. And remember, I said that I specialize in non-traditional candles, and one of those candle types is glitter. So I need the smooth tops for in order for uh, my glitter process to work, but that's me. I have ventured out and tried other waxes for different types of candles that I make, but my mainstay and my go-to is Cocoa 83, the AccuBlend Cocoa 83, because there are several out there. I've tried others, but that's my tried and true. And again, I'm going to revert back to saying, do what is the best thing for you, because different waxes react, as uh, Rob said, for soap. It's the same thing for candles. They react differently for different fragrances. If it's a heavier fragrance, um, you don't have to use as much, at least in Cocoa 83. With soy, you get that instant because Jayla's candles, even though they are citrusy, which tends to be soft, they are strong because she uses soy. So again, test, 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 and retest again to find what's best. All right, so let me bring Loso back in this conversation because Loso uses a different type of wax than either Jayla, Abba, or myself. So Loso, I'm gonna turn it over to you about your type of wax that you use and why. All right, um, well, for me, I actually have used a plethora of waxes. Um, what I started with was 464 and 444. Our relationship lasted the duration of the cure time. Um, <laughs> after only having two or three candles that actually worked for me, 
I knew it was not for me. Um, so I stumbled upon 6006, which has been my tried and true since I've um, launched my company. But since then, I've played around with other candle waxes. Um, I played around with a container blend from Virginia Candle Supply, which is the Scorpion Wax, which is soy wax, um, a heavy base of soy with some palm and other natural additives that has a great scent retention and all of that good stuff. Um, and then I also played around with Coco 83. I played around with Coco 86. So I've, you know, dabbled in the coconut waxes and I've used them for massage candles and things like that. But um, I tried and true is going to be 6006 because it's honestly quick turnaround. I can make a candle today and theoretically I can burn that candle tomorrow. So within 24 to 48 hours, you have that that good old, you know, candle that's ready to go. It doesn't take a long time to cure. Whereas with soy, waiting 14 days, that meant that, you know, I had to make this candle, wait this amount of time, and then test it to make sure the scent works. Whereas with my wax, I can go ahead and make a candle today and burn it in two days and do a power burn and say, oh, this works, I can sell it, you know, or this don't work, I need to go back to the drawing board. So that's why I, you know, chose to stick with the 6006 for my main wax because it's durable and I can, you know, work with things quickly and even with anything, the longer they sit, the better they smell. So I do have candles since I've switched to my bigger jars that I allow to sit a little longer after testing because I know they're going to smell way better um, after sitting for like a week or so once they're made. But they can hit the site because it you know, all comes full circle with the shipping process. Correct. Correct. And for my mentor, in case you're watching, Elizabeth, uh, what she used to tell me when I first started was the longer they sit, the better they get. And she also uses 6006. Um, are you finding with the supply issues that the 6006 has been hard to find? I know we went through a crisis there with both soy and cocoa 83 um, within the past couple of years that they would run out. Um, have you run into that with the 6006? Well, funny thing, I really haven't it. Well, you know, my um my supplier, I try not to cheat on my supplier, but I do have a backup <laughs> because horrible story. The first time I decided to cheat on my supplier and go with wax from somebody that I never got wax from, I ended up obtaining a bad batch that came from the manufacturer as a bad batch. So I had to throw a whole 40 pound case in the garbage because it was not usable. Um so what I end up doing was I stick with my people. So I buy a lot of wax at a time. Um, I haven't had any shortages with them. However, you know, periodically when I check, they'll say, oh, we're out of stock until April. I'm like, dude, it's January. What do you mean you're out of stock until April? But then they have it right back. Um, so I haven't had any issues finding it. It's just a matter of the price. You, of course, of everything has went up from 2020 to now. What used to be. 60 some odd dollars is now 120 dollars with shipping to get shipped to you you know so that's the only difference i've seen with that particular wax what would you recommend and thank you for that and um also before i ask you my question what's your feedback on the scorpion wax when you loso had me trying the scorpion wax and i actually still have some and i love it but i just use it for personal use but what's your feedback on the scorpion wax would you use it again I actually have a whole nother um, couple slabs of scorpion wax. I actually love it um, because even though it's uh, heavy on the soy, um, it's one of those things where it has a good scent retention. And then on top of it having a good scent retention, um, it actually is a single pour wax. So you're not pouring and hitting it with a heat gun or nothing like that. It's actually a single pour. Um, when they say single pour, they mean single pour. Um, so that's one of the biggest things I like about the scorpion wax. And I definitely will use it again. I use it for personal use now, but I have to kind of use all that wax I have up. So I'll do special things with those wax for like holidays and stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, for the record, since we're talking about scorpion wax, can you please tell everybody that's watching uh, for even new candle makers that might still be doing their wax research where you get uh, scorpion wax from? Oh, yeah, you can get Scorpion Wax from Virginia Candle Supply. This is actually a specialty blend developed for them. Um, so this is a proprietary blend. So this is the only place you can get that Scorpion 130 container wax from. All right, and I appreciate that. All right, so for those of you that are brand new to candle making, 
I want to give you a word of advice. Do not do what I did and go and buy all these different waxes. And then you find one that you like and you've got several hundred pounds of wax. Get them in small quantities because when I first started, I didn't have a mentor. Um, I have one now. And if you don't have one, I strongly recommend that you um, get one as well as an accountability partner. Um, the reason why candle making can be very expensive as well as soap making. And it's wonderful you get the kits, but you'll quickly find out that you wanna venture out and do other things. Or if you decide to start a business, you don't wanna run out and buy a whole bunch of wax until you build your production up. Then as a Loso purchase, I also make wax purchases twice a year. Um, I am actually taking on a project that I'm sounds like I'm gonna possibly need a pallet of wax. But I'm thinking about that before I just jump out there and do that as well. And I've actually been making candles for a while now. But please do not jump out there and run and get wax like that in 40 and 50 pound slabs unless you are sure that you are going to use it up. That is the best advice that I could give you um, in terms of supplies because you could easily be into the thousands like I was when I first started. And then you've got to do a de-stash of things that you don't use because it can accumulate quickly and you in most cases will not be able to recover your money all right so i'm going to switch back over and loso of course thank you jayla and abba also thank you all for your feedback on the candle side mr rob i'm going to bring you back up which you're here already but really quick let's get into the advanced stuff but let me go over one thing that we have not mentioned, which is paraffin wax. The wax is typically, and Loso correct me if I'm wrong, uh, for paraffin wax, when you hear paraffin wax, that's like the taboo wax. There are still a lot of candle companies, including the big makers and one in particular that still uses paraffin in their candles. That's a real controversial subject because, and we will talk about this in a later episode, I don't wanna to get too deep into the paraffin wax saga today, but it's food grade paraffin in most cases. That paraffin wax has evolved over the years. And again, I encourage you to do your research to see if that's something that you would like to use in your line. Paraffin is primarily used for scent. So keep that in mind. And there are paraffin blend waxes that have coconut soy, soy. Um, there's palm, paraffin, soy. There's so many different blends and waxes out there. Please do your research. You also have palm wax. Palm wax is a harder wax, but it also is used. It's, it's really pretty. It's kind of hard to describe palm wax. Um, it's actually mixed into just a little, little bit um, in uh, Cocoa 83 from what I understand, but it's a harder wax and it makes like this really pretty pattern because um, I thought about experimenting with palm wax as well. Um, so that's another one. And the big boy, besides soy wax, so you've got your top three in waxes, your soy, paraffin, and coconut wax. I Like I said, I use a coconut soy blend but there's also another one, which is the big boy of the coconut wax, which is coconut apricot. That's your more high-end luxury brands. They use a proprietary blend. Typically, that is done just for them of the EC26 or coconut apricot wax. So that's one that that's the higher end of candle making. However, and Lozo again, since you're up here, correct me if I'm wrong, sometimes coconut um, EC26 or coconut apricot, um, those are two different waxes, by the way, they're a little bit less inexpensive than coconut 83. It just depends. And then you also have coconut, you have virgin coconut soy wax as well. So that's why I said there's all types of blends and additives and proprietary uh, waxes. So once you find your base wax, where I was going with all of this, and then we're gonna switch back over to soap makers. 
experiment with that and because remember every time you switch wax you might have to switch your wicks and you might have to switch fragrances as well so keep all of that in mind and again if you are a new candle maker take it one step at a time all right uh jayla i'm going to put your comment up here while i'm talking to rob rob are now you mentioned cold hot cold process and melt and pour for a beginner what would you recommend besides melt and pour and why what, can you break it down like we just did with waxes where you have your beginner your intermediate and then your um advanced level soaps soap bases i'm sorry oops there we go um that's a really you know that's a that's a really interesting question because um, I would say either or, but if I was leaning because they're, I mean, if I was leaning towards a first time maker, I would say hot process only because it's more safe, it's more fail proof then I would say cold process because hot process, you're literally using heat to basically um, use heat to basically kind of cook the soap through the process. So basically what you're doing is just cooking it. Like if, if most of the time they do it in a crock pot and you, and you kind of just cooking it until it's, you know, until it's gone through the chemical process and there's ways to, um, there's ways to know if it's gone through the chemical process. And I think that's easier because you're cooking it through the chemical process and you're not waiting a day or two or three like cold process and there could be and there's could be issues when you're kind of um doing that with a uh, cold process so i think it's immediate and when you cook with um, when you use hot process soap this it's soap at the end of of the cook process and also the, the reason why i like it, it uh the hot process method is because you can use basically any fragrance that's um, rated to be used with um, with with soap because the chemical because the, the the fragrance is is basically added after the chemical process so you're not so the the fragrance isn't going to mess is it going to mess with the the process the soap saponification of the soap and also you're going to sometimes with the saponification you can it, the, the the fragrance the payoff could be affected so you're not so with hot process in a lot of ways you're not dealing with those issues and also this is this is a kind of an advanced not a really advanced but it's kind of advanced uh subject but when you're talking about super fat which is added oils um basically in the soap to to give more moisturizing properties um, with cold process, when you add the super fat, um, you, you, so it's about to get a little bit complicated, but when you add super fat and cold process, you don't like, so say I, I'm trying to like uh, explain this in the, in the, in the easier way. So say you want to use, uh, a, a luxury, a, a luxury oil, um, in your cold process as your super fat. So you're moisturizing, you know, to, to, to bump the moisturizing properties. Well, if you do it in cold process, because of the process, the chemical process, you're, the, the process is going to pick which super fat it's going to super fat. If, if, so you don't really have a choice. Even if you put that luxurious um, oil in or butter, you're not going to have a choice in that. But with hot process, if you, if you add that, um, that oil, after the cook process then you have better control because whatever you add in after the cook is basically what is basically going to be the moisturizing you know property so if you add it like i don't know if you add it like i use kupawasu which is a is a, is a brazilian butter so if you if you cook if you if you use hot process and you add kupawasu after the cook process you're going to get that kupawasu moisturizing properties of what you wanted if you used it in the hot process basically the ke the chemical process is going to pick which super fat it is so if you have like a um, olive oil coconut oil palm oil castor oil and then you added the kupawasu as a super fat well the chemical process can pick either one of those and you don't really have a control over which oil that it picked to be the super fat 
but with hot process, you have better control. So I like, so in a long way around the corner is I like hot process because you can, you can control better the, the, your ingredients that you're putting in there, like fragrance in your super fat. And it's also the process you're, you're using heat to heat the process. And so it's, a, I feel like it's an easier way to soap make than, than cold process. I think cold process, there's a lot more variables. I mean, you're talking about the heat of the oils, the heat of the lye solution. You're talking about, hum, you, it gets too complex. It gets complex to the point where you're talking about where you live at, the humidity, right? So there's a lot more, um, there's a lot more um, things you have to actually pay attention to and work with when you're talking about cold process, but with hot process, those things, a lot of those things are mitigated through the through the process of you're actually cooking the soap. And so, yeah. And so that's kind of, I hope I explained it the right way. I'm Because I'm trying not to go, I already go on tangents, so I'm not trying to go on a tangent to explain this stuff. I'm trying to do it, <laughs> trying to do it as easy as possible without overwhelming but yeah it, it, it's it's a i mean i mean soap making is, is chemistry right it's, it's a chemical process so with with a chemical process there's precise ways to do it and there's also a lot of variables that depend on a lot of outside factors so i hope that answer, i hope i answered your question you did. You, know, no. you did and you will have an entire show where we're going to talk about <laughs> nothing but soap we're going to have another episode where we talk about nothing but candles so you will be able to go into more detail as such um and let me throw this advertisement in um i put it i put the link in the chat in case anybody else wants to come up and talk with robert and loso and myself, but also um, let's keep the conversation going. We have a Facebook group for this channel. It's called Bubbles and Flames Podcast Community Group, where you're able to ask any questions or make any comments about anything that you've heard in the chat. And also do me a favor, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit your notification bell and turn it to all so you'll know when everything you will know everything that's going on with this channel as I'm still in the process of growing it and we have other things coming. So what do you notice about the two guest speakers that are up here with me tonight? There's one thing that just jumps out if you could put it in the chat for me and we uh, will jump back into our discussion about the different types of um, waxes. What do you notice about about the two individuals that are up here with me. Yes, Jayla, thank you. They are both men, all right? And you actually have a male Chandler, which is the proper pronunciation for a candle maker. And then we have Mr. Robert or Rob representing the soap makers. Where I'm going with that is soap making and or candle making or both like Loso does is not for one sex or the other. So a lot of people feel like there's only female owned businesses. We have a lot of male Chandlers that are out there. You may hear the term Chandler, Chandler, Either way, it just depends on where you're from. All right. So I appreciate both of these gentlemen for coming up. They have a lot of knowledge, which you will see them more on the channel in future episodes. I wanted to go back to a comment that was made from Abba. She said, what about beeswax? I want to start experimenting. Abba, I don't know if you're aware, but there's some new beeswax blends out. Beeswax, um, I'm going to give you a breakdown before we get out of here tonight of the different um, uses or recommendations that I got. And I just looked it up from Google, um, why people use or feel one about one way about a wax or another. But there's blends out there, Abba. Because I'm thinking about doing beeswax as well. Of course, I'm going to test it on a small scale. But beeswax is known for scent retention. All right. That's for the candle maker side. Again, one thing I wanted to circle back on, Rob, really quick. If I was just starting out in soap making, what would you recommend? Of course, we've already talked about melt and pour. It sounds like you would go hot process. Am I correct in stating that for those that are going to watch the replay later? 
Honestly, if you're just starting out, I'll go milk and pour just okay. so you get the process of, of, of just making soap and going through like the different fragrances. And like Loso said, there's a lot you can do one. Another thing about hot process. So not to go on a tangent is that you can do amazing designs that you can't really do with hot process or, or cold process. So if you want cool designs, if you want vibrant colors, because a lot of times when you're dealing, there's a lot of bases um, with hot process that are transparent. So that means that it, it, um, it retains color very well and very vi bright and vibrant colors. So I would tell people to start with hot process soap. It gets you in it because a lot of times you want to just go through the process to see if you even like making soap or not, right? And so mm -hmm. it's an easier way to just get in the process, start making soap, see if you like the soap, see if you like making soap, um, see if you like using fragrances, the fragrances, and then move on to like a cold process and a hot process. So I always tell people, to be honest, to go into hot process, I mean, to um, milk and pour soaps, there's a lot of amazing bases out there that you can use. There's shea butter bases, there's aloe, there's hemp, there's, you know, cocoa butter, there's three butter, there's oatmeal, all these, all these different types of um, bases that you can use and start experiment with. And also, if you want to start out and you want to start out and you want to start a business and making money, milk and pour is going to be the fastest way. If you're talking about cold process and hot process, you're talking about if you're being responsible, you're talking about at least a six months period of just figuring out how to make it and make sure it's safe and, and going through the processes. If, if you're being, and if, and if you're, if I'm being like really like the, 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 the time limit that you probably should do all this in is a year, a year of just experimenting, making things. Cause you have to go through the whole process, wait till the soap cures. And, and so I would say if you're starting out, especially if you want to do a business and start selling soaps, especially if you're a candle maker, I would say that milk and pour is the easiest. It's similar to um, candle making just without the wick. And so you already know that process of melting down a base or waxes and adding fragrances and pouring it into a mold or a container or whatever. So I think it's a similar process to candle making. And so I would definitely say milk and pour just start now. Okay. All right. And we will talk more um, in future episodes about how to make that happen. If you've decided that you've done your testing now, you're going to start a business. I'm ready to do this. So I'm going to take the easiest route that I can. There are several suppliers that have kits that make it easy for you that you can actually take the kit and actually start a real business. But we've not talked any more about businesses since episode two, and that's intentional because the focus needs to be on you doing your product research for you to decide what type of products are you going to offer now, first and foremost, and then how we still got to talk about packaging we've got to talk about how are you going to get this out but test 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 because as you heard rob give you a sneak peek when you decide and make your decisions you still have a whole testing process you've got to do user testing there's there's a lot that goes into this and he gave you a sneak peek basically in our professional opinion, and I think I speak for everyone that is here on this podcast tonight, please do not rush to put out a product because you'll regret it if you do. If you do not do your research, and I'm sure Jayla's gonna type something in the comments any second, but you want to take your time and do not rush the process. And the reason why I had to jump on this little rant for a second, because I saw something earlier and I it was sent to me twice. And this is on the candle making side, but for my soap makers, I know you all see this craziness. I know you've seen it. Where nowadays it is acceptable to have an exceptionally high flame. When did they change the rules? And I'm sure for the soap making side, you all can say something that has been accepted now because people aren't testing. They're just throwing it out there that you all see. 
So please test, test, test again and test, test, test until it's best. I would hate for you all to get a lawsuit because you are rushing to get a product out there. We are going to have the discussion when we get back to our business discussions about insurance, what type of insurance you need to have. Do you even have to have insurance as a candle or a soap maker and why you should have insurance and what's the importance of it? All right. Um, Courtney, I'm surprised that you and or Jayla did not type something in the chat. Um, again, you've got your wooden wicks versus cotton wicks. Uh, if you are going to offer one or both, you need to do testing. Again, you're going to have your favorite suppliers. You all have heard us mention a few suppliers uh, here tonight. I'm going to try to get uh, some of the lovely ladies that we all use and gentlemen uh, to see if I can get some of the suppliers to come in and uh, also uh, talk with us. They may do, due to their schedules, uh, pre-recorded uh, conversations, but uh, once I get that in place, I will let everybody know so you can send in your questions and I will ask them on behalf of the Bubbles and, Flame commu Bubbles and Flames community. All right, so with that, we are getting close to our time and we started, um, we're not quite at an hour yet, but I, I know there'll be some discussion after this. So here's the different types of waxes and soap bases that we discussed tonight. And there's one that I left out and I'm gonna save it for last. There's one on each side. We talked about beeswax and Rob, the last one I left out was glycerin soap. So I'm gonna read what I have to read and then I'm gonna hand it back over to you and if you wanna speak about glycerin soap. All right, but we talked about paraffin. We talked about soy. We talked about palm and coconut waxes, and we'll also add beeswax to that list. All right, on the soap side, we talked about melt and pour. We talked about cold and hot process soap. And then we're gonna circle back around and talk about glycerin, but let's talk about the benefits of each. I'm gonna start off with paraffin because it just happens to be first on my list. All right, paraffin wax is long burning, inexpensive, and it's easy to find. There's several variations um, and blends that contain paraffin wax. However, if you are trying to market yourself or your product as having all natural, there are some food grade paraffins that you want to look at because there's a big debate going on in the candle community right now. Par paraffin is not all natural, but unless you use essential oil, again, that's another whole discussion. The moment you add fragrance oil, your product's really not all natural. Just, just want to let you know that. Uh, but we can talk about that. And um, again, put your feedback in your comments in because I'm sure I'm going to get some comments about that, but look it up. All right, we also talked about soy wax. Soy wax is environmentally friendly. It's clean burning and affordable. All right, notice I didn't mention clean burning for paraffin. Paraffin is long burning. Soy wax is clean burning. All right, let's talk about palm wax. Palm wax is also long burning. It's slow melting and it creates beautiful crystalline patterns. And that's what I was saying about these beautiful designs. All right. And there's also um, some blends with soy and palm wax and coconut wax, which is also slow burning, long lasting, and it's a natural choice. And coconut wax is also a clean burning wax as well. Uh, I'm going to skip glycerin soap for just a moment. And the melt and pour base, very simple. It's ready to use. You can easily customize it as both uh, Loso and Rob mentioned, and big one, it's cost effective. All right, so those are just a few of the waxes and the soap bases that we discussed for tonight. Again, we're gonna have a longer discussion where we talk about blending and the importance of doing your research before you start mixing everything together because you are dealing with, in some cases uh, of soap, you're dealing with chemicals that could change your texture. It could affect the outcome of your product. And also what type of line are you gonna offer? 
because that will determine uh, a lot of your purchases as well. If you're offering a high end line, a luxury line, then we've got to talk about some of the other things that you need to ask. Excuse me, not ask that you need to research. Also, glycerin soap, before I turn it over to Rob to talk about this and then we will wrap up. It is non-toxic. It's easy to work with and can be used to create a variety of products. All right, so Rob, really quick, if you can talk to us about uh, glycerin wax, but let me say this really quick. Uh, Jayla also mentioned that it's important to test. She says she uses three different types of wax, one for colored soy or soy that has color to it, one for a stronger scent, and one for her luxury line. So she just validated everything that I just said. It's the same on the soap making side. So with that being said, Rob, if you feel comfortable with this, uh, for glycerin soap or glycerin soap base, can you give us a few comments about that? And while we're listening to Rob, if anybody has any comments that you would like to have mentioned on this episode, please put them in the chat for me and Rob, take it away. So glycerin soap is actually milk and pour soap. So it's like glycerin soap is can be milk and pour, but not all milk and pour is glycerin, right? So basically the difference is with milk and pour soaps, the reason why it melts is because of a solvent like propylene glycol or glycerin, right? And so the so these solvents basically allows you to be able to melt the soap and harden it again, right? So glycerin is a form of milk and pour soap. And so that's basically, I mean, glycerin also, I mean, it's a humectant, it draws moisture to the skin, it can be very soothing. And so th those are the benefits of using like a glycerin based soap, but glycerin soap is basically in the traditional sense, we talk about glycerin soap, glycerin soap is basically milk and pour soap. But you don't you can make your own basis, you can make your own milk and pour basis, you can make your own glycerin basis. So a glycerin soap also doesn't have to be milk and pour. But traditionally, when we talk about glycerin based like soaps, a lot of them are milk and pour soaps. So I use a glycerin based soap. Um, that's basically that I use for milk and pour. That's a milk and pour base. So you can have you can make your own glycerin based soap. That you make it, you go through the process and kind of make it. And it's, it's, it's transparent. You can do um, it's like I said, it draws moisture to the skin. It's soothing, so it has a lot of um, a lot of natural. It has a lot of benefits to your skin. So you can obviously make a, a glycerin-based soap, but you can all. But more traditionally, when we talk about glycerin-based soaps, we're talking about then they're mainly found in in milk and pour. So. If you like that's that's basically how I use it and basically yeah that's how that's how it kind of works. So it's another it's it's like I said it glycerin it's one of those things where it can be it's it's one of those things where glycerin soap can be a milk and pour soap but not all milk and pour soaps are glycerin based cuz there's propylene glycol there's a lot of glycols that you can use um to to basically make it so that the the base actually melts. That's how when we talk about milk and pour, that the reason why it can melt is because it either has a glycol or gl glycerin, a glycerin or a glycol that's that's allowing it to melt. So I hope I explained it the right way. It's a it's nuanced, but it, there is a difference. But yeah, it's yeah. traditionally when we talk about glycerin, so. We're mainly talking about they're mainly used in milk and pour but you don't have like i said you don't have to but you can make your own glycerin based transparent basically soap that that you're not using as milk and pour so hopefully i explained that right yeah you're good and like i said we'll dive deeper into it okay. um in upcoming episodes all right so stay tuned for next week i want to thank my guests that came up to the stage and those of you that are hanging out in the comments uh, i appreciate you loso and rob for coming up again they are part of the team of moderators and experts that'll be featured on this channel stay tuned 
and pay attention to the uh, Instagram because I have an announcement that I'm going to put out um, probably tomorrow um, as well as the edit of this live stream. I want to thank each and every person that came and hung out with us tonight and this is a discussion that I absolutely love. I will also be adding episode number five so look out for that and we will continue this conversation in the uh, Facebook group in the chat. And if you have any questions, comments, or just something you'd want to talk about, let's chat about it down below. All right. I thank everyone that came and hung out with me tonight. Please like, share, and of course, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm trying to get it up to 50 people and we're at 31 right now. If I can get to 50 people, that allows me to go mobile, and then I can start visiting some of these suppliers. I'm going to start with the ones in the Atlanta area anyway, and we'll start having more interesting topics on the channel. If you have something that you want to talk about, of course, send me a DM. I'll add it to the episode list. Or if you want to be a guest and you want to come up and talk like Loso and Robert did, hit me up. I'll add you on to the roster or we can talk about other ways that you can get on the channel. Again, everybody, thank you for hanging out with me. Have an awesome night and an awesome week. And I will see you all. Abba, thank you so much. I appreciate you for uh, staying and coming back this week. And everybody have a blessed week. And I'll see you next Wednesday. Talk to you soon.